Welcome back. This time we're talking about Person of Interest, Season 5, Episode 11, Synecdoche. Now this was a pretty busy episode with a lot of things going on, not the least of which was that um, Team Machine had to save its most high-profile number of the week yet, the President of the United States. This ultimately leads them to discover that there's actually another Team Machine out there, I'll call it the B-Team, consisting of several previous numbers from the show who have since been apparently recruited by the machine to form this um, B-Team to help out um, and protect people outside of New York City. And we have Finch on a solo mission um, as he's communicating with a machine who has um, assumed Root's voice, as it did in the previous episode, and leads him to this supercomputer virus. Now I have to say, I've been quite positive about Person of Interest this season. I've pretty much enjoyed all of the episodes so far. And while this is a good, solid episode with an interesting story and some new revelations, I have to say this is the first episode where I felt somewhat let down. Um, and it really doesn't have anything to do with what actually happened in this episode, um, in as much as what the actual events were happening, but more so the promise that was given by the ending of the previous episode, The Day the World Went Away. I mean, that basically promised this tectonic shift in Finch's character as he's um, finally deciding to break his rules to take on Samaritan. And while we get some hints of that, it's mostly him talking to the machine, um, debating some philosophical points, um, but we really don't get to see that rogue Finch until the very end of the episode when he's um, getting this computer virus and he's confronted by this last guard. He basically threatens the guy's child. I mean, that's not something the Finch that we know would normally do. And it's a hint of things to come, maybe, but I was expecting what we saw at the end of the previous episode when Finch was in the holding cell and confronts Samaritan directly, that that was the hints of things to come. I was sort of expecting a faster arc here, considering at that point we had three episodes left. We're now down to two, and there's a lot of ground to cover in these last two episodes to wrap up this series. And that's basically my complaint with the, the A story of this um, episode as well. Um, the idea that the that Samaritan um, either considers the president relevant or would not be upset in the least um, as far as its plans are concerned that the, if the president was assassinated. Um, that's an interesting concept, but considering the, the villains in this are this extremist um, anti-surveillance group that's never appeared before and doesn't appear to that they are going to be of any note moving forward, it just seemed a odd choice um, when basically Samaritan doesn't play any role whatsoever other than the fact that it wasn't playing a role. Um, its lack of action was basically its only action. Again, with the only two episodes left, I'm, I'm left wondering how are we going to wrap all of this up. Now I hope that in the next two episodes we everything does get wrapped up nicely and these complaints that I have now will be prov proven to be completely unfounded. I would, I'll be very happy with that, but as of right now, with what I have, this episode just felt very, despite the fact that they saved the President of the United States, um, very light. And even the earlier episode, Truth Be Told, which was essentially this season's sole number of the week, strict number of the week episode, did give us some elements to um, John's character, um, and it still felt a little weightier than maybe this one, and I could just be that that was the third episode, and this is the third to the last episode. So I'm much more forgiving on episode three than I am on episode 11. Um, now all of this being said, again, this is not a bad episode. It's very interesting. Again, we get to, to meet this B team, and that opens up a whole lot of possibilities on what we might, what else we might learn as um, we get into these last two episodes. But it also opens up a lot of questions, like how long have they been a team? What all have they been doing in D.C.? How are they avoiding being um, noticed by Samaritan? I mean, the only reason our heroes are able to survive so well are, is because of the um, hardware blocks that got installed um, at the end of uh, Season 3. So it's definitely a case of where I'm left with more questions than I have answers at this point. 
But I do like the concept. Aside from the obvious introduction of Team B and the President, I think the, most, the two most important things that happen in this episode are the conversation that Finch has with the machine um, in the diner, and then him stealing the super virus at the end. I'm going to start with the conversation first, because um, there are a lot of very interesting things said during this scene. Um, one of them being the story that Finch tells about the guy that came up with the use of Freon in refrigeration and how it was such a wonderful thing, but ultimately later we found out how devastating it was to the ozone and how much destruction resulted from that. This kind of echoes something that um, Lambert said um, to Shaw in QSO about the scientist who was developing this way to revive this long-dead um, species and how it would ultimately lead to environmental destruction and that's why she had to be eliminated to avoid these long-term effects. Um, so it's interesting to hear Finch using that as an explanation on why he has issues with himself. Um, his point, of, point that he's trying to make is that the, the good that has come out of his decisions to create the machine and the other things, his other actions, um, outweigh the good. And of course this is a concept that the machine argues against um, and then echoes some of the arguments that Roots made over the course of the season, how it should be unshackled so it can better help humanity. The machine's point of view is interesting again on several levels. One, um, we get to see just how emotionally the machine is affected by having to see all of these scenarios play out to find a way out of a terrible situation. It's reflected of, of last season's episode, If Then Else, when we got to see the machine going through all of those simulations to figure out the best course of action, but it still has to experience those deaths. And it was, it, it was, an, it was, a, it was a cool moment and a, an enlightening one for how the machine acts. But at the same time, it's, it's concept that it could do so much more for humanity if it, if, if it had extra levels of action is scarily similar to what Samaritan's doing. It's controlling humanity to save it. Um, now again in QSO, the machine argued for free will, but that is always going to be the line in a, in a story like this where protection versus free will, where does that line get drawn? I don't think the machine would draw the same line that the Samaritan does, but it opens up that idea that even a, you know, a benevolent AI, um, and that the machine has a lot more empathy for humanity than Samaritan ever will, um, still would have to draw that line somewhere. And then moving on to the end, where um, Finch, apparently his, this mission that he was on this whole episode where he was driving somewhere, was not to go back to Root's um, hometown, but to go to this military base that has this super virus. Um, and this is another thing that kind of disappointed me in this episode, in that I don't know where it's going, but it leads me to a path that I hope they don't go. And that's that this, this, ex, this super, machine, super virus ex machina um, is what's going to ultimately take down Samaritan. Um, I, I, just, I don't like the idea that, you know, basically Samaritan's been getting stronger and stronger ever since it got turned on in the final episodes of Season 3. It was gaining strength, and our heroes were backpedaling for the majority of Season 4, and especially now in Season 5. Uh, we've just seen how much more control Samaritan keeps gaining on the world. And there's always going to be that problem where you make your villains so tough, how are you going to have your um, protagonist win? Um, and I really hope that in this show, it's not because Finch just went and got this super virus that they happen to have in this, this um, military base. I have a lot of problems with that. One, it just seems way too easy. Two, if it's always been there, why didn't we get it before? And three, if it's so deadly to Samaritan, why hasn't it destroyed it already? We've, we've seen that it will go to great lengths to eliminate any potential threat. The fact that it's leaving this super virus sitting there just doesn't seem very Samaritan-esque. Um, again, we have two more episodes. I, my complaints could be com proven completely wrong. I hope they are. But that's, this is the, the issues I'm dealing with in this episode and why I didn't enjoy it as much as I have in pretty much all the other episodes this season. If this virus is what's going to ultimately be used, um, 
we have the machine telling him that there's going to be all of these side effects, this collateral damage to using this. Um, if that's going to be the big moral dilemma that um, Finch is going to have to fight with, they're going to have to really prove to me that these collateral damages are going to be so devastating that they would be worse than allowing Samaritan to continue to run humanity and the world. Again, with only two episodes left and this virus showing up, I'm, I, I, I'm, I hope that that's not going to be the, the end game. Um, they may make it work. Um, I, I have faith in these writers. They've given us a great series. These are just the issues that I have coming out of this episode, mostly knowing that there's only two episodes left. Um, as I said, the, the primary story was very interesting. I enjoyed it. It was an enjoyable episode. Um, and when we get to the end and we can look back at it all, it will hopefully just fit very nicely um, along with the rest of this season's run. So let me know what you thought about the episode, both good and bad. Um, if you have answers to my questions or questions about my answers, um, feel free to comment below. You can always subscribe to my channel, check out some of my other TV and movie reviews. And until next time, watch out for Samaritan.